Chaos Steel. Chaos. Beautiful chaos. Beautiful chaos is called a forgin. Many of you might not know what a forgin is, but it's basically where a bunch of people that like beating the crap out of metal all get together and they beat the daylights out of some hot steel. And this is that sweet, beautiful chaos. Hot steel flying around, things being made, people learning and having fun. This is one of the best things about craft, is not only is the making stuff fun, but then there is also the community. There are the get-togethers where people are sharing knowledge freely, helping each other out, and having a boatload of fun making sparks. An interesting world. Twist Damascus. Awesome. So all these pieces started like that? Yeah, yeah. So stretch out into some bars. We'll stretch them, twist them, stretch them, twist them, stretch them, join them all up, and we'll wrap around the whole thing. That's awesome. Is that like that hand and a half sword? Very similar, but it's going to sweep up. It's going to be a big pirate cutlass. Pirate cutlass. Sweet. That's awesome. I think he has a sword he made similar. Here we go. This is it. This is an interrupted twist piece that Rod made. It's going to be cool to see the pirate cutlass he makes. We are in the lecture theater for a little talk by Blenheim Forge, big wheel grinding. Okay, it's now day two of the event here at Owen's place. And you can see we got more beautiful chaos here. More people are making Damascus. So Rod Hughes is at it again, making up his multi-bar billet. And we got folks in here feeding away at steel again. Looks like a lot of knives being made. Oh, that's a pretty shape. That's looking nice. And then through here, Owen's got grinders set up. Folks are grinding away at some of the stuff they made earlier at the forge in. What are you working on, Roland? Blackfoot knife. Blacksmith knife. Now the people that have watched my videos for a long time, you might recognize him. July 2016, he took a class at my workshop. Have a look at that, let's have a look. Looks great, beautiful work. It's a really great setup that Owen's got here. He's got the big brother of my Pilkington. Look at that, that is a 200 weight. All days and onions. Now all days and onions is not Pilkington. You might be thinking that, but all days and onions bought Pilkington and they're kind of, they're, they're identical. They're identical. So it's the exact same operating principle, but the difference you see here is this is a two-piece construction. So the anvil is separate from the hammer. The reason for it is as you get into a heavier ram weight of the power hammers, they're putting so much force in that you want to separate the foundation of the anvil and be able to have a much larger anvil than you could possibly have with a one-piece construction like my Pilkington. So that anvil doesn't end just there, but it probably goes into the uh, into the floor a good ways. And probably a couple tons of concrete underneath it. Ah, here we go, look at that. Under this tarpaulin is one of Owen 300 weight all days and onions, I believe. It might be a Pilkington, I don't know. But that's what the anvil looks like. So it's a slightly larger, larger power hammer, but it'll get you a rough idea of how big the two-piece anvils are compared to obviously what's inside my Pilkington. But hey, would you look at that? Owen's also got an all days and onions in a 100 weight setup. So this is almost identical to mine. There's my foot on a 100 weight anvil, which is a big block of metal inside the frame. You know, it's kind of one piece. And here is my foot on a 300 weight anvil. It's a lot more meat, but it's a much bigger hammer, that's for sure. But there is also something interesting, which is that Owen has an older Pilkington, not all days and onions, than I do. So he thinks this is an older Pilkington. The interesting thing about it is the valve, instead of being on the side like mine, 
is up top there. It's this really interesting construction. How weird is that? There we go, power hammer patented in England and America. Doll maker Peter Pilkington, Lancashire, England. I sadly can't find any dates on it. The other interesting feature of it is the flywheels that inside the hammer are mine, much like this all days, flywheel is out of the hammer. Here it's covered by a non-see-through guard, but the flywheel's out of the hammer instead of inside. You didn't think you'd be learning about the intricacies of Pilkington and all days and onions power hammers today, did you? This is another cool tool that a lot of blacksmiths use. It's a uh, fly press, so the way this operates, you've got these balls up here, you spin the thing and the inertia of the balls and the leverage exerted because you've got a thread means that spinning it, you can get a pretty good amount of force off it. This is what he's making. He's making uh, beaded like, wire. One, two, one, two, that one, is yeah. phenomenal. It's using a tool like this. I thought they were cutting the wire, but it's got this tiny little groove running down it. And they roll the wire back and forth and create these beads going up. It's insane. It's incredible. Just a little talky thing, and these guys are gonna get that running. That is a meter diameter grinding wheel. Big thank you to Owen Bush for putting on a fantastic event. Had a huge amount of fun, very educational. Thank you guys for following along. I hope you hit subscribe if you're new because we're back on the Bowie Knife tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.